Hey, I'm Steve. Uh, today I just want to talk to you about some basic MIDI editing. Now this is something that I started off with way back in the day using Cubase. Um, and I've had to learn it quite a lot along the way. And most of the time it's been the hard way. Now MIDI is um, defined over here in Wikipedia. And if you want to read it, you can pause right now and read through that. Or you can just go over to... Uh, Wikipedia and type in MIDI but yeah basically it's just musical instrument digital interface and it's the way that your computer can talk to your software and turn it into music isn't that nice and it can be used for all sorts of different things it's really fantastic so we are using MIDI in Pro Tools to talk to our instrument and at the moment my instrument is this play software and I have loaded in here a Bösendorfer piano. So as I play notes in here, it turns those digital signals into notes. That's what this engine here does. And makes it come out in a WAV file. Enough of that. What we're going to be doing is just doing some very basic MIDI editing. So um, I've got a click track set up here, and a metronome, and it's set it at 130 BPM, beats per minute. I'm going to play a little tiny piece of music and I'm going to go in and do some editing. So there's our piano. I'll just record. something very simple. So as you could hear, there was a couple of little mistakes in there. There was a few notes that were louder than others. Um, it was inconsistent in timing. It was close, but not absolutely consistent. Now, something like that, I would love to lock into the grid. Now, the grid is all these little gray and blue lines in the background there. Sometimes you don't notice them because they just blend into, hey, the background. Now, the grid at the moment, um, I did have it set up to triplets, but let's have a little look. We have three notes in each uh, beat. So I've got here a bar consisting of one, two, three, four beats, four crotchet beats delineated by those uh, dark blue lines. The dark, dark ones are the bar and the sort of dark-ish ones are each crotchet beat. And the light ones are a little in between, but the quavers. So at the moment, well, I've got three of those in each beat. So they're actually going to be a quaver note. See that? I've got them set as quavers there. I can change that to be quarter notes, but it's, it's, let's not do that. Going back to quaver notes, or one-eighth notes. And being three in the bar, it means they're a triplet. So I can actually click on triplet. And lo and behold, you can see now there is three quaver notes per crotchet note, so three triplet quaver notes. And that sort of matches what I played. Scrolling in by pressing Option and scrolling on my mouse wheel, and moving around by pressing Shift and scrolling. So let's have a quick look at what I've done. I'm going to stretch it out. There is a number of things you can do to edit. There are some very, very quick ways and some very, very slow ways. And sometimes you just need to do the slow way because it's more accurate and you want to keep things humanized a little bit. You might just want to fix up one or two notes. Or you can just go through and oops, select everything and correct it all in one hit. But today I'm just going to show you one by one. So over here, I've just, as you can see, I've stretched out my, my track. You can either do that or you can click on the clip or I should say double click on a clip like this and it brings up a whole new window which is a MIDI editor and it's got all the notes in here and you can move them around and do whatever you like. I'll just press Command Z for undo. You can see the playhead follows the MIDI signals. But I don't like working in this particular window. It annoys me. I'd rather see it all in context with whatever else I've played down here. And right now, obviously, there's nothing. But often I have plenty of instruments on the timeline. So what I do is I kind of recreate that window in the mix. So over here, you can see that you can choose what this clip looks like. It can either be 
you know, blocks where it's just, you don't see any notes at all. Clips, which is the default. Notes, now that's where it starts to look a little bit like your, um, your what's the name, the MIDI editor that we just went in. I mean, they're all squished up close together, but you can change it up here by going up and down and you can move around the notes by scrolling the little, what's the name there? I tend not to. I tend just to keep it, you know, roughly the same. Because later on, you can see we've got some lower notes and I just, I want to keep them in the window as well. So now in notes, well, let me just show you the others. We've got velocity as well. And that shows you how hard you hit the notes. <laughs> as you can see, I'm not very consistent at all with how hard I hit those notes. It's because I was using all five of my fingers on the right hand and not all of them are as strong as each other. Uh, you can choose your MIDI volume. I normally keep that set at 96. That's the that's basically unity for MIDI. Um, I don't change that. I normally change the volume down when I record it to a wave. Uh, you know, mute, pan. You can adjust the pitch bend. <clears throat> with this particular pan piano, it doesn't actually have anything happening with the pitch bend, so I won't even look at that. Um, these guys here, after touch, program change, this X doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. But the controllers are interesting. So your mod wheel, um, you can change quite a lot. Some instruments are programmed to do things with a mod wheel. Sometimes it's just like a vibrato, like a waver. Other times, like in this particular instance, um, I'll pull up the mod wheel and it goes extremely staccato. And then back to normal. Which is wonderful. <clears throat> Um, breath control, foot control, expressions, sustain is another one. So this is my foot pedal, as you can see. I put my foot down there, and I put my foot down here, and I've held it on for the entire thing. So you can do anything you want in here. I've got selected here my multi tool by you know you can either select one, two, or three, or you can choose them using your uh, oops function keys. Uh, F What's that, F6, F7, F8, and you can even go over here, F9, F10. But F6, F7, and F8, if you click any three of those at once, it chooses all of them. Or you can just click above it on that little bridge section, and you've chosen a multi-tool. And with that multi-tool, it means it moves around. So if you go to the top, you can do things like that. Or if you just go further down, you can just highlight. And it's very, very uh, functional once you get used to it, and it does take a little bit of getting used to. Now we are in the volume, so we can't adjust any notes at the moment, we can't even touch those, sorry, sustain. So I'm gonna go back to notes. As you can see, my notes are not on the grid. Now I'd like them to be on the grid, so I can, I can just move them around like this and make them on the grid, but only if I have grid selected up here. So if I have slip, I could go move it anywhere in between those grid lines. Or if I go on grid, that's also F4 if you like. I can snap them to the grid. Whoops, and I just moved that one. Let's put it back. And this is a very slow way of going about it. Now, that's okay if you want to go about that way and just and change things accordingly. Now, the other thing I want to show you quickly is uh, the fact that you can do entire swathes of them. Um, and, um, well, actually, I won't show you just now. That's called quantizing. And you can literally go in there, option three, click um, eighth note tuplets because that's what the grid is, and apply, and it goes snap. But I'm just going to undo, and I'll show you that in more detail in another tutorial. Um, I'm going to go back to velocity because as you can see some of these notes are louder and some of them are very quiet. Let's have a quick listen. <laughs> so the, these two are very quiet. Uh, I'm not into that. So we could just pull them up. I kind of want it to be fairly uniform. It doesn't have to be exact and I don't want to um, make them all exact. If I did I could choose this line tool up here and just draw a line across well, theoretically. In this particular case, I can't. Uh, 
Hmm. All right, ignore that. I can't. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. Okay, so. I don't want them all to be the same, and I don't want them to be um, like sort of robotic. You can make piano sound extremely robotic by snapping them to the grid and then changing all the volumes to be exactly the same. It just doesn't sound like a person playing it at all. So what you, what you really have to do is use your ears, and you have to really go into it and choose the ones that you want to change. So there's a few in there that you can see already. I mean, visually, you can see that they're really quite high. Like, the higher the note is, the higher the velocity. Now, I don't really want them to stand out much, so I'm just going to go through and just pull back a few of them to make them sort of the same. This is a bit of a pre-work. Some of these are quite low, so let's pull them up. Whoops. That's about right. Pull that up, pull that up. As you can see, I'm not making them all the same. I'm not trying to match them to the other ones because with the piano, it never does. It doesn't matter how good you are, how much you've trained, it's never going to be exactly the same. So let's have a little listen now. As you can see, I haven't changed those guys there. I've got a mistake here somewhere, waiting for it. There, right there. Okay, so I'll put my cursor there and I'll scroll in using Option, Scroll. Now I've got an extra note. Da, 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 da. That note there. Now I can either just highlight it like that and press Delete, like that, or I could just double click on it, double click, and it's gone. And, well, that's super easy then, isn't it? But what if I wanted an extra note? What if I didn't have that note there? Well, there's two things I can do. I can take that note, hold down Option, and drag a new note out. And there it is. It's exactly the same. So see how the velocity is exactly the same as a clone of this last note as, as I've just moved it down. I'll just change that a touch so it's not the same. The other way is to draw a note on there. And how you do that, I have forgotten. Hmm. Used to be able to just click and double click it and it was there. All right, I'm just going to ignore that. So, option and drag. Now, if someone can pick up on that and tell me exactly how to uh, put a note on there, that'd be fantastic. And just chuck it in the notes below the video. Um, as you can see, I never do it that way. I just do option drag. Now, if you miss an entire section or let's just say, we'll go back to the beginning. Let's have a listen. I, I might choose this whole section as, look, I, I don't like it. I think I didn't perform it that well. I'm going to delete it. And that one too. I prefer that. You can actually, literally, I'll just scroll in just a little bit so you can see. Hold down Option and drag it over there. Right, so it's just like Word or any word processor or Google Docs or whatever, it's copy-paste. You can even cut and paste. So X, V, and you're done. I'll just undo that because I didn't really want to do those. Let's just say you wanted harmony. Now I've got that as C. I want harmony up, up starting an E. So I just want a third harmony. So I can hold down Option. There we go. <laughs> and obviously each note doesn't work. But, you know, you get the gist. Undo. It does make it very complicated to go and change things later on. So, in a nutshell, there's a few things you can do there. Now, the 
beauty of having it on a grid like this is um, just moving those things around while I'm talking. See this little metronome over here? That's a, that's what that is, the little green triangles, a metronome. You can either choose, see, the uh, sign comes up as ticks. You can either have ticks or samples. Now, we'll just leave it on ticks. Because what happens on ticks is it really focuses on where the note is according to the grid. Now we can change the grid by doing something very simple. Um, there's our tempo over here. I'm going to change the tempo up and down like that. And as you can see, the, the notes change accordingly. Now that's wonderful. If I had it on samples, it wouldn't. The samples mean it just looks at the note as itself, uh, regardless of the timeline. I'm just going to undo that. So yeah, you can uh, slow it down at the end. Choose to... Whoa. <laughs> See? You can do all sorts of things. When it's on the grid, you can change it wonderfully and beautifully to do whatever you choose. Now that's a little bit of basic MIDI editing for you and I hope you like it. I hope you go a long way with it. Go out and do some good.